Hello everybody, this is Dan from Christie's RV. Today we're going to be taking a look at this 2020 StarCraft Autumn Ridge 26 BHS. We're going to go over the thing, some of the things you might need to know once you've purchased this unit. So first off on the front of the trailer, this one has electric tongue jack. Uh, the controls on it, the one button is just the light and you're up and down. Now this jack has um, a crank handle in case that this fails for some reason so to use a crank handle you just have to pop this rubber plug out of the top the crank handle is inside the trailer and you'll just put that in and crank it so you can get it on or off your vehicle behind that you have your propane system so you got two 30 pound tanks uh, in the center of them you have a crossover regulator so the system is designed to be used with both bottles open whichever bottle that this arm here is pointing towards is the one that it's drawing propane from. When that bottle becomes empty, the little sight gauge on the front is gonna turn red, but it automatically start drawing from the second tank. Uh, so when you notice that the sight gauge is red, you can just turn the arm over to the other one and the gauge will go clear because there'll be propane in that bottle. And then you can take off the empty bottle and have it filled. Behind that, you have your battery in a box On the side of the unit, you have your docking station. So if you open that up, this is where you can hook up your water hose. We'll go here. Then you have two selections. So this blue valve, you can either fill the fresh tank or set it to city water. So city water is gonna use that water from that hose in the trailer. Uh, if you wanna fill the tank, you're just gonna put it to tank fill and it'll fill it. In here as well, there's a set of taps with a quick connect. Uh, the other half of it's inside the trailer. You just pull the collar back, push the piece in, and it locks into place. Uh, below that, you have your tank flush hookup. So this has a flusher in the black tank to help clean it out. So that needs to be used with the sewer hose connected and the black tank valve open. Uh, and then you can turn that hook the water up and it'll help clean the tank out So underneath that you have your sewer hookup So on the sewer hookup itself, you're just gonna twist the cap off There's a sewer hose in the back bumper. You just pull the plug out. It's in there Then you have your valves You have a gray valve and a black valve. So the black valve is the toilet. The gray valve is the sink water Now this is where your power cord hooks on so it just you let it line it up and then it twists into place so once you get it lined up it goes in it twists and then it just has this locking collar that you can thread it um, so nothing can pull the cord out so on the door side you have your hot water heater to open it up you just got to turn this tab it comes open so everything's controlled from inside the trailer. Uh, the only thing here that you may have to do is remove the drain plug. So the drain plug goes in down in the bottom corner here. Uh, when you wanna pull that plug out to drain the hot water heater, you need to take the pressure off the system first. So you need to open up a set of taps inside before you take that plug out. Another thing to note is your pressure relief valve here. It is common for them to drip. So if you do notice a little bit of dripping there, it is normal. This is your fridge uh, compartment. Now everything's controlled from inside. So you don't have to take that panel off to get in there. Um, one thing to note is you can't lean anything up against it. That's gonna restrict airflow into those vents. Then you have your exhaust uh, vent for the furnace obviously it'll be hot when it's running up top you have your um, outlet for the fan above the stovetop so if you want to use it you actually have to pop it open so you just stick your fingers in the two notches and pop it open for travel it needs to be closed so you just got to push it till it snaps closed then you have one outside receptacle so on this unit here you have uh, a fill for your fresh tank on this side as well so if you wanted to fill the fresh tank, you can just stick the hose in there or fill it from a jug or whatever you need to. When the tank is full, it'll just start uh, draining water out underneath the trailer. 
And then underneath that little white valve is your drain for the fresh tank in case you wanted to drain it. So the awning itself is controlled. You go inside, on your left hand side, there's all your switches. So they have the awning one. So we're gonna press and hold extend. So one thing to note about these style of awnings are they're not made for heavy winds or heavy rain. So if you have any either of those, you need to roll the awning up. Uh, another thing with them is if you're not at your unit, I definitely recommend that you roll it up. So then your switches uh, are here beside that. So you got one for the exterior light under the awning and one for the light inside. On top of that, you have your slide out control switch. So to run the slide it out, you're just gonna press and hold out. One thing to note here is that you need to make sure that there's nothing stuck in behind the slide out before you hold it out, like before you run the room out. Um, another thing with the slide outs is they need to be all the way out or all the way in, otherwise they do not seal. So you're gonna press and hold it till it gets all the way. Once it gets all the way to the wall, it makes a lot of ratcheting noise. That's how you know you're all the way out. The other thing you have here is your monitor panel. So in the monitor panel, you have you can test your battery level, fresh tank, black tank, and gray tank levels. Then you have your two switches uh, on the bottom, one's for the water pump and one's for the water heater. So the water heater itself has this little light up on the top. If the water heater is not lit, uh, then this light will come on. Now it'll try three times on its own uh, before it gives up trying to light. Now on the side of the cabinet here, down below, you have your CO and propane detector. So your carbon monoxide and propane detector. Now this is wired to the battery on the trailer. Uh, if it goes off, it has an indicator on here on which one it is, if it's carbon monoxide or propane it's detecting. Uh, another thing to note with this, if your battery on your trailer becomes low, uh, it will let out a high-pitched squeal. It's trying to inform you that it's not gonna work properly. So you have your uh, fan and light switches here to light the stove top. You just turn on whichever one you want on and then turn the sparker. Now the center burner is your high output burner. So if you're going to boil water, that's the one you want to do it on. Light the oven. You're just going to turn it till you get to the little flame icon. Once you get there, you can actually push in on the knob. So you're gonna push and hold the knob and turn the sparker. So once it's lit, you gotta hold the button in for maybe five seconds or so. Then you can release and then you can just set to the temperature that you want it to be at. The fridge controls are you got to open up the freezer door to get to them so you have your on and off switch then you can choose between either auto or gas so what auto does is it uses electricity as long as it's there but it'll switch to gas if it needs to um, so if you're plugged in and then the power went out it's going to automatically switch to propane until the power is reintroduced or you can go straight to gas when it's on gas, if it does not light for whatever reason, this little check light is going to light up just to tell you that it, it isn't working. And then you can just scroll through your temperature settings on this side. Below the um, stove is your um, breakers and fuses. So everything's labeled in here. One thing to note 
is that the RV breakers don't have an indicator when they're tripped. So if you're having a power problem, you need to uh, just find the appropriate breaker and turn it all the way off and then back on again. So this here is your thermostat. So this thermostat is what they call a compassive touch unit. So it's not actually buttons, you just need to touch it. If you push hard on these, they will stop working. So the first press you do, it just turns it on and you can scroll through your settings. First one you come up to is fan. So you have choices of the fan for auto, high and low. Now this is just gonna run the air conditioning fan only to help circulate the air. If you put it on anything other than auto, it's gonna run that fan speed for both the air conditioning and if the furnace is running. So the next selection is your air conditioning. You'll just turn it to whatever temperature you want it to work at, and then it cycles on its own. Furnace is the same thing. You set it to the temperature you want. Um, then the furnace is going to turn on and run for 15 to 20 seconds before it lights uh, as a safety precaution. And then once either you turn it off or it gets to that desired temperature, then it's going to run for that 15 to 20 seconds without the flame on, um, again, as a safety precaution. If you turn it off, you just go back to the off screen. So in the bathroom, first off, the toilet in here is foot flush. Flush the toilet, you step the pedal all the way down. If you just want to add water to the bowl, you just partially step on the pedal and it'll only add the water. Um, the receptacle that's in here is a uh, GFI receptacle. Now this receptacle uh, controls anything on the trailer that's in a wet location. So the one here, this, anything in the kitchen and the exterior plug is controlled through here. So if it trips the GFI, it's just gonna trip in here. Uh, you'll see the red lights on and you just have to press the reset button on it. So now this unit has um, winterizing bypasses that are installed from the factory. So the bypass for the water heater is under the back bed. So there's two valves on it. Uh, right now it's in summer mode or what you would normally use it at. You would turn the valves the quarter turn that they turn uh, for winter mode. Um, the other thing at the back corner, there's two little T valves. Those are your low point drains for your lines. So if you wanted to drain the water out of the lines in the trailer, you just lift up on those T valves and it'll drain the water from the, the water lines inside the unit. So the water pump has a bypass as well. Now it's under the sink. It has this little cover panel screwed in. So you take your screw out, then you can gain access to the pump. So right now we're in summer mode or it'll be drawing from the fresh tank in the trailer. For winterizing, you're gonna turn the valve and then the clear hose that's here is gonna go in the jug of antifreeze. So one last thing with the awning. It is adjustable uh, for pitch from side to side. So to adjust it, you're just gonna grab the bottom arm and just pull down on it till you, where you, you till it is where you like it. So you can do this on both sides or one side, whatever way you see fit. Before you're gonna roll it back up, you need to straighten the bottom arms back out. One thing to note with this is that over time, because this is a friction fit, it will be loose and you'll pull it down and it won't stay down. So you may have to just tighten that bolt back up uh, once it wears a little bit. So I think that's everything on this unit. I hope everybody has a great day and thanks for watching.